Good morning. It is Wednesday, October the 28th, and this is The Drill. Thank you, thank you. The uh, prayer of the day comes from dailyscripture.net. Lord Jesus, may I never doubt your guiding presence and your merciful love towards me. Through the gift of your spirit, fill me with courage and persevering faith to trust you in all things and in every circumstance I find myself. Give me the strength to cling to your promises when the world around me begins to shake or crumble. And when my love and zeal begin to waver, fan into my heart a flame of consuming love and dedication for you who are my all. Amen. Welcome to all the butchers, bakers, and candlestick makers out there. I'm Ron, your host and the only true conservative in the United States today. Who is the true conservative? He's the person that has the courage of his convictions and is confident in what he knows. He's the person that understands that culture trumps politics. He's not selfish but minds his own business. He acts like an adult. He's patriotic and uses common sense. He is judgmental and moralizes. He refuses to speculate, speaks clearly and definitively, and is not afraid to say no. He's open-minded asking why rather than why not. He's consistent, credible, and influential, not ashamed of his existence, unafraid to learn or correct his mistakes. He is a normal American, and he's better than the socialist. He's a better friend, father, brother, family member, and a better person, period. You have to know that being a true conservative is best, or you're wasting your time. So what happens after Donald Trump? Assuming that uh, President Trump gets reelected, he's going to have to leave office in 2024. What happens then? Who takes his place? Who's going to be the new Trump? Who's going to be the guy that's going to cut the executive orders and uh, appoint the conservative justices? Uh, is it going to be Ted Cruz? Is it going to be, there's a lot of people that think that maybe it's going to be Donald Trump Jr. Uh, I think that's a mistake to just assume that anybody that has the name Trump must be um, uh, alike or sim similar to or exactly like Donald Trump. And uh, so the issue really is culture. Culture informs our politics, and as long as we have a culture that supports a Donald Trump, we're going to be able to get Donald Trump's, or for that matter, from the Democrat side, John Kennedy's, if we have a, a culture that supports the, uh, those kinds of candidates. But increasingly, our culture is moving further and further to the left, and it is going to be more, we're going, we may end up getting more candidates like uh, Miss Cortez, uh, or Miss Omar, or I forget the name of the other ladies, th three ladies they call, refer to as the squad. And uh, those are very sharp, left-leaning, uh, uh, revolutionary types. So if we continue to go left, we're going to see more of the uh, AOCs getting elected, whereas if we uh, conservatives have more influence over our culture, we're going to be able to have uh, more Donald Trumps and more John F. Kennedys um, as candidates. So um, this country doesn't, it deserves a heck of a lot better than uh, what it's getting lately. It deserves to have uh, a good choice, Donald Trump versus John F. Kennedy. Or for that matter, a better one this year instead of Joe Biden would have been uh, Bernie Saunders. That would have been a very interesting race, Donald Trump versus Bernie Saunders. But it um, didn't happen. Uh, so my uh, podcast is short. It's approximately 5 to, to 30 minutes long because shorter podcasts are easier to download and listen to. And the biggest socio-political influences of my life are my parents, my teachers, Sir Francis Bacon, John Locke, Sir Isaac Newton, St. Thomas Aquinas, Ayn Rand, and Dr. Mortimer Adler. My podcast is made available through Spreaker and can be heard on iTunes, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. Today... Left-wing jerk of the day, where do we stand, quote of the day, right or wrong, conservative vocabulary, good news, bring back conservative aphorisms, how to think about the Hunter Biden laptop situation, and socialist vocabulary. All that when I come back.
Thank you. The left-wing jerk of the day is Hillary Clinton, who tweeted, quote, vote them all out, in, unquote, in reference to the Senate Republicans that voted to confirm Judge Barrett. The Republicans did their job under the Constitution. They confirmed a uh, judge to become a Supreme Court justice. And so because they had the audacity to actually do their job, keep their promise, uh, Hillary Clinton thinks they should be voted out. She's a jerk. The biggest problem with the news besides undeclared bias is the lack of continuity. Uh, The news people say that the American people have a very short attention span. No, they don't. It is the fact that uh, it is the news departments that have a very short attention span. Uh, Something that is uh, on uh, the news today is gone tomorrow. And not because we ask them to get rid of it, but because they're just so busy trying to be first that they're no longer interested in being accurate. So I decide to take uh, issues facing the country and report on them daily until a story is complete. Hence, where do we stand? There's six days left until the election. Judge Barrett was confirmed by the full Senate, sworn in, and is now Justice Barrett. There's still no news on the uh, monster that's been arraigned for shooting two Los Angeles sheriff's deputies. George Soros is still not dead yet. No law enforcement union has yet been decertified, and no law shielding officers from prosecution have yet been repealed. Now, the important part about that is that we still have this, as far as the danger of having uh, police, excess police violence still exists. Nothing's changed. Uh, The unions uh, pump up the officers and uh, fill them with, Um, false ideas that the world is a much more dangerous place than what it really is, uh, encourages them to um, make sure that they make it home to their families, very dramatic, uh, make sure they lead with their gun, and uh, things of that nature. So they're uh, very uh, creating um, very potential volatile situations, uh, uh, the unions are. And uh, there is no, there's laws on the books in all 50 states that Uh, allow uh, the police officers to get away with things that you and I could not get away with, especially when it comes uh, to shootings. So uh, those have to go and they haven't, uh, nobody's working on them yet. So we still, we're still in danger. There's still a possibility out there that today, tomorrow, whatever. Well, as a matter of fact, there was a police shooting um, in, uh, I think it was, was it Philadelphia uh, yesterday and uh, protests uh, about that. However, it sounds from what I've heard that that shooting was uh, justified at this time. But still there's the, because of the police power, the police unions and the fact that they still exist, the danger still exists that we will have uh, more uh, police misconduct. Uh, The so-called Patriot Act is still the law of the land. And uh, that's uh, oddly, it's uh, one of the most restrictive and uh, dictatorial laws that we've ever passed. And it was championed by uh, the Republicans in the um, Bush administration, so I, ironically enough. So it's uh, just because somebody's a Republican doesn't mean that they're for freedom automatically. So, and that New York Patriot and the Patriot Act is um, proof of that. New York Times v. Sullivan continues to encourage news people to be super citizens who can use unnamed sources to slander and defame people at will without fear of consequence. Where's the expose on the Washington Press Corps? Uh, where's, the, where's nonprofit news? Jill Biden is still the vilest woman in America for encouraging her feeble husband's campaign to continue. The communist flu continues, but the number of new cases is dropping. Actually, uh, in some places it's going up. There seems to be some sort of a second wave going on, not only in the United States, but in Europe. So in some places it's going down, but in others... Uh, they're uh, getting some new spikes. Um, let's see. The communist, uh, no, no, we co- covered that. Blue Cross and Kaiser Permanente continue to uh, profit off of our sacrifices because if we're encouraged to stay home instead of going to the hospital to see the doctor, they don't have to pay out as many claims. Uh, let's see. Governor Newsom has enacted a racist scheme to keep Californians locked down indefinitely. The president has courageously decided to suspend negotiations on the communist flu relief bill until after the election. Apparently some sort of um, unofficial type of uh, uh, negotiations that are going on between Nancy Pelosi and the Treasury Secretary. But uh, as of yet, there's no 
progress. When I come back, conservative vocabulary. Thank you. There's uh, more to being a true conservative than how you vote. If you want to be a true conservative, you've got to act, think, and talk like a true conservative. Hence, conservative vocabulary. Words like no, go back, acceptance, mind your own business, right, wrong, should, good, bad, evil, reality, certainty, morality, beauty, and polity. These are terms that the left doesn't want to use or want us to use because they are realistic. Quote of the day, quote, it is during our darkest moments that we must focus to see the light, unquote. And that's by Aristotle. And now we've got right or wrong and the following is a clip from Hour 2. It's about a four-minute clip from the Hour 2 of the Rush Limbaugh show. Here we go. But my point is, if you're longing for the day where politics is not part of football, where politics is not part of baseball, there's only one way that's going to happen, folks. And it isn't by wishing it away. The only way that's going to happen is if these people on the left are routinely and continually politically defeated. You can't just wish things back to normal. They don't want things back to normal. They want everything politicized. As such, they have a post-election agenda. More riots. Truth commissions. This is where you are going to be sent to get your mind right. The other punishment for people like you who do not agree with them, let me give some pull quotes quickly before I have to take a break. The plans are very specific, sketching out activities even by date. Using online organization tools, the idea is to forge loose affinity groups that'll be free to take more high-risk action. As the Federalist's Joy Pullman, who dug up all this, noted... What kinds of actions these might be are stated in a strategic framework for action following the 2020 election that sketches out their plans for rioting and attacking American institutions and life until Biden is installed as president. This series of documents claim that if Trump declares victory, then that's going to mark the start of the coup. In other words, a Trump victory, not just Trump claiming victory, but a real Trump victory is going to be a coup. They're not going to consider Trump's victory legit. This is what they're telegraphing here. So, so much for your right to vote. If Trump declares victory, that will be the start of the coup their coup to kick him out, to get rid of him. Another pull quote. In fact, even if Trump wins in a landslide, and I believe that's possible, even if Trump wins in a landslide, Republicans win both chambers of Congress. The left already has plans for Trump to the disruption. And it's not, it's not some fantasy. After four years of nonstop interference with Trump's presidency by the Democrats, we know this is a hard reality. They're not going away. Trump wins. They're not going away. They're doubling down. And they're going to be doubling down on their insanity. And part of me says they are putting this news out there to scare you. They're trying to tell you, just back off. Let us win or you're going to, you're going to be playing hell. You're going to be you're going to be in the middle of hell and we're going to be responsible. But if you let us win, if you back off, you don't vote for Trump, everything is going to be fine. You want peace? Let us win. Here's more evidence. There's a group out there called Shut Down D.C. Shut Down D.C. is vowing street action, violence, riots, regardless of the outcome. We can't anticipate exactly how Trump and his enablers will try to attack democracy, 
But we know that the stakes are too high to sit on the sidelines and wait. That's why we are making plans to be in the streets before the polls even close, ready to adapt and respond to whatever comes our way. So, in the streets before the polls even close, what this means is attempted mass intimidation and instilling public fear. The left's bogeyman, a Trump coup, which in their fevered imaginations means any Trump victory at all. Any Trump victory at all is going to be considered illegitimate, folks. If he wins in a landslide, if he wins the House and Senate, it's going to all be considered illegitimate. Trump is going to have cheated, he's going to have colluded, he's going to have meddled with the Russians or whoever, you name it, they've already set the stage for this. Thank you. And um, that was uh, Rush Limbaugh from Hour 2. Now, Rush gets this wrong. He gets it wrong because his analysis is shallow. Uh, He would have uh, gotten this right if he had uh, read and uh, became familiar with Saul Alinsky and Alinsky's Rules for Radicals. The main idea in Rules for Radicals is the action-reaction cycle, where the left initiates action and does so to elicit a reaction usually from conservatives, hopefully for them, an overreaction. And that's what the left is clearly doing here, allowing their plans to be published in order to create chaos, to instill fear and loathing amongst normal people in the hopes that normal folks will overreact, spurring a cycle that the left hopes will culminate in a socialist revolution. So what? Uh, Don't overreact. If you live in an area prone to protests and violent activity, then take reasonable precautions. If you're not living in an area prone to violence, then relax. Remember that the extreme left in this country is vastly outnumbered by realistic, normal people. Every other talk show on the radio spends all of its time grinding its audience with negatives and bad news. This is, and it's because they are really not conservative, but reactionary. Uh, This is demoralizing, and the reason that I want to make sure that we include good news. And the good news today is Judge Amy Barrett has been confirmed and sworn in as now Justice Amy Barrett. President Trump has uh, solidified another peace treaty, this one between Sudan and Israel. Ha-ha to John Kerry, who said that this was impossible. President Trump was nominated three times for a Nobel Peace Prize. Don't believe the polls. The only purpose for the polls, as Rush Limbaugh has noted, is to shape reality, to project rather than to reflect, to psychologically demoralize you. The only relevant statistic is that incumbents win re-election 85% of the time. President Trump's judicial picks are beginning to have an effect because the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals struck down a California law banning high-capacity magazines as being in violation of the Second Amendment to the Constitution. Uh, The state of California is appealing that decision. The left has its resistance, but we've got persistence. We've got Attorney General Barr and Senator Lindsey Graham et al. who are going to conduct a thorough investigation into the treacherous behavior of former FBI Director Comey and his henchmen. Now, word about this is there's a lot of people I've heard on the radio that call up and they're puzzled as to why we haven't had uh, prosecutions on this yet. Why haven't people been indicted, etc.? I think it's going to be a very uh, dicey situation. I know it's a very dicey situation for Republicans um, because there's an issue here of, uh, again, appearance. And not only just the appearance of the Republican Party, but the appearance of the United States of America as a whole. In some countries around the world, Uh, third world countries, when a political party, a new political party takes over, the first thing they do is go out and prosecute and even in some cases execute uh, the former regime members. They go out and hunt them down, uh, put them on trial for various crimes real and imagined, and then uh, throw them in prison uh, or uh, even kill them and do so as a matter of power, not as a matter of justice. And so what we've got here, again, is that uh, with Comey and his henchmen, as I like to call them, 
uh, they, are, they were for the, from the former administration. So if the Republicans are not really eager to rush right out and prosecute these uh, folks from a political standpoint, from the standpoint that uh, we, they think, a lot of Republicans, that we will end up looking like those third world countries and that all we're doing is just going out and exacting political revenge rather than getting uh, justice. But um, there's hope that we're, there's going to be something, there's got to be some sort of justice here because the, on, the, on the flip side of that is the United States of America, one of the things it stands for the most is that everybody is subject to the law, everyone. President of the United States on down. And at some point, we have to prove that to the world. We have to be able to say, uh, yes, as a matter of fact, our uh, leaders, as it, w- as it were, are as subject to the law as uh, regular citizens. And uh, besides, there's a personal aspect to this, too. I just love, I don't like uh, Comey at all. I don't like his personality. I don't like his attitude. I don't, of course, he doesn't have... He has almost zero character, uh, and he has no ability to apparently um, look at himself in a critical uh, manner. So uh, I just love to see him being frog-marched out of his house to a waiting squad car. Um, The mayor of Los Angeles and the LAPD have decided to show some respect for property rights and the rule of law for once by announcing dozens of arrests and ongoing pursuit of suspects from summer rioting. The Michigan Attorney General announced last week that she'll no longer enforce the governor's executive orders by criminal prosecution. So, haha to you, Governor Whitmer. The state of Florida has the courage to lift all coronavirus restrictions and businesses and schools are reopening. Hooray for the governor of Florida. And uh, thank goodness they're setting a good example and hope, hopefully, uh, this is going to go ahead and spread. Grocery shelves are full again. This means that things are getting back to normal. Real normal, not new normal, not anarchist normal. Nothing can stop Rush Limbaugh. Not the left, nor cancer. And Amazon stock is up. Up next, bring back. Thank you. As conservatives, we make the presumption for the status quo and change only when there's an obvious or prima facie case for change. But many of the changes that our civilization has seen are not necessary but gratuitous. uh, We've agreed to these changes under duress. The following is a list of ideas, concepts, abstractions that shouldn't have been changed and so they should be brought back. Bring back property rights. Excuse me. The pre-1970 filibuster, bring back outlaws, single-income households, integration, parenting, and along with it, corporal punishment, the primacy of existence, certainty of knowledge, and universal rights and wrongs. Bring back principled behavior, masculinity, and femininity. Adam 12, John F. Kennedy, the gold standard, pre-HMO medical care, nonprofit news, civil service, the term stupid question, arguments and fights, the cultural influence of the church and the Boy Scouts, bring back the influence of social organizations such as the Lions Club and the Rotary Club, bring back bowling, bring back smart. Be of good cheer. The universe is benevolent and success is to be expected. Therefore, the left has no authority, no power, and they cannot win. Also, it means that we have little to no tolerance for people who succeed through guile, cunning, cheating. Think about it. Conservative aphorisms. These are words and slogans that I think would make great bumper stickers. Why? Who asked you? Who cares? Who is we? Are you sure? How do you know? No, you don't understand. No, you aren't listening. You're right. I don't care. No, you're not a leader or a change agent. 
who died and left you in charge. And my personal favorite, get off of my lawn. Next up, how to think about Hunter Biden and his laptop. Thank you, thank you. How to think about Hunter Biden's laptop and its contents. Two weeks ago, the FBI revealed the existence of a laptop belonging to Hunter Biden with documents and videos that made Joe Biden look bad. They make Joe Biden look bad both as a father and as a presidential candidate. The vast majority of the information, especially the videos, have yet to be authenticated, but the value of the items on the laptop to the Trump campaign lies not in their prosecutorial potential, but in their psychological impact. One of Joe Biden's strengths is in his name recognition. Name recognition means that the electorate is comfortable with Mr. Biden because they think that they know him. Good old Joe. Joe the gaff machine. Joe with the big smile and the blonde hair on his legs. Uh, the emails and videos on the laptop, however, cast doubt. Doubt as to whether or not we really know who Joe is and therefore whether or not we can really trust him. Maybe there's something sinister going on with Joe. Maybe Joe, good old Joe, good old gaff machine Joe, isn't the guy we thought he is. Maybe Joe is just putting up a front and that uh, behind the scenes, he's not just an affable dunce, but a, a sly, cunning, crafty operative. A man named Bubalinski has provided some corroboration of the laptop's contents. All of this serves to keep the scandal in front of the public and keeps the words scandal, sex tape, Chinese Communist Party, plausible deniability, and bribe associated with the name Biden. Worse yet, for the left, none of this is going to be settled before the election, so Biden supporters are left with the decision as to whether or not to trust him and his family. What should happen now, voting-wise, is that Biden supporters should refuse to take a chance and should vote for Trump instead. Up next, socialist vocabulary. Thank you. Since uh, nobody wears uniforms, at least not anymore, in terms of right and left, how do you identify the socialists in your midst? By their vocabulary, by the way they talk. And socialist in, uh, vocabulary includes such words as stakeholders, Latin X, empower, going forward, mansplaining, politically correct, supportive, and hegemony. Back in a minute. Thank you. Who is the socialist? He is the man that seeks consensus rather than develop his own opinions. He's subjective, petty, and small, taking everything in life personally. He's outrageous, boring, and rude. He pretends to be a leader and a change agent. He pretends to be your friend. He is sly, cunning, and deceptive. He dresses, acts, and speaks like a slob. He's informal and terminally unique. He's childish and pretends that he knows nothing. He's pragmatic, has no conscience, and pretends that might makes right and the ends justify the means. He acts randomly and rationalizes his behavior. Deterministic, blaming others for his mistakes, Skeptical, demanding that others solve his problems. His unreasonableness and irresponsibility make him a bad role model and a bad father, brother, family member, friend, and a bad person, period. So if you think you should be friends with a socialist, think again. On the next episode, American Conservative Magazine contributors make their election predictions. That concludes another episode of The Drill. Be honest, be smart, be beautiful, and always ask yourself, what is real, how do I know, and what should I do about it? I'm Ron, and that's The Drill.